Hello, this is Larry Poncho Brown, and I'm giving you the real story behind what's happening with the Harlem Fine Arts Show. Many of you by now have seen the uh, ABC 7 on your side feature where they expose Dion Clark and some of his bad business dealings. The story, uh, again, was sensationalized, so of course they made it seem like uh, there were, we were starving artists and that starving artists hadn't been paid. When it and indeed, the story showed two vendors who uh, worked with the Harlem Fine Arts Show to promote the show and to provide walls for the show that didn't get paid. So there were subcontractor vendors that didn't get paid. They were not artists, and even though one is an interior designer, Actual artists in this show have not gone through that situation. Now, to, artists have gone through a specific situation with them. Absolutely, over the last 10 years, there's been many things that have happened uh, where Dion Clark, who is, uh, he is what he is. He's a snake. He's the kind of person that will just get away with anything. You know, he's a narcissist. He's the kind of person that has only one agenda, and that's to keep... Uh, this Hall of Fine Arts show train going, and he doesn't care about the passengers, whether it be artists, whether it be dealers, whether it be sudden contractors. That's his MO. Everybody knows it. All the artists murmur about it. Industry folks have heard it. Sponsors have heard it. But some kind of way, he is a genius in keeping people in check. We're trying to keep his trains on the track. I also want to give a disclaimer where, because uh, you know, that story set back artists 40 years, man. Our African American artists, this show was not based on starving artists. This show, from its inception, invited the very best of the African American art market, the commercial art market, for quite a few years. Uh, it, it, it was the best of the best. You had maybe 80% of the artists in that show that were the most popular artists in the country. Now you have another level of artists that were emerging and up and coming that participated in the show, but from its inception it was a big breakdown of, of people. He got away with murder with all of that. He misused us. He misplaced us he had you advertise for one size space you get another size space it was just total chaos he would overbook shows people came from chicago they came from new york they came from atlanta to participate in this show and he would have oversold and his way of dealing with it was to close in space that you may have already paid for he would misrepresent an island so if you had a, a six booth space it would be four booths it was simple stuff but the show has gone through an evolution. And I want to also leave this disclaimer. The personnel that works with the Harlem Fine Arts Show are good people. I'm talking about they are hardworking people. They are on the mission of making this show better. They're on the mission of trying to protect um, the artists and artists' interests. They are completely not the problem with Dion Clark. Dion Clark is just a bad apple. And despite the fact that he's a bad apple, he has um, a real keen sense of, of bringing in people who are loyalists to his agenda. That's what's been going on. Now, let me talk about the artists. Now, I know I'm jumping around, but I'm so passionate about this whole situation because I've been getting calls all week from everybody, from art dealers to artists to people who are on the inside of a fine art show, even from reporters. That's how big this story has become. There are two kinds of artists. You have established artists who know the business. There are marquee artists, and then there are aspiring artists and then there are artists that are at the beginning of their career. This show used to deal with the higher folks on the list and then there was 20% new artists. Now it's, it's inverted where you might have 30% uh, resume marquee artists and then the other 70% might be emerging and up and coming. You know why that's the fact? Number one, one is generationally. The movement's been going on for about maybe 30 years now. So you're supposed to have a new influx of talent. But when you look at the artists that have come, the um, Kevin Wack Williams, the Romare, uh, uh, the Rom Jonathan Romains, the Frank Frazier's, the ENS Galleries, these guys don't rely on Dion Clark for their success. These guys can go to any city in America 
and their contingency of followers will follow them to wherever they go. That's a lot of power. But at the same time, that same power is an enabling action because people come to the show to see marquee artists and they're there, they, they're, they're there to do business. Being an artist is a hard job. We don't have a lot of time for all of the stuff that's going on. But what happens is if, if those guys are doing what they do, what happens to all the other artists? I'm not taking away from them because they were primed, ready. They created this business. The new and up-and-coming artists, it's a different ball game for you because Deion Clark cares less what happens to you. He wants your money. He wants your boo fee. And don't be fooled. The show in New York City, the boo fees run anywhere from $1,200 a booth. Now, you might say that's not a lot of money, but you can't go to New York and do a show, a single booth space, and not spend $4,000. It's just out of the question. Preparation, travel, eating, housing, parking, you name it. It's an expensive investment. And that's why I want to talk from an investment standpoint. This show used to have the top artists in the country investing in this show. And somewhere along the line, because of the actions of Dion Clark, they began to pull out in droves. And droves. No more Charles Bibbs. No more Paul Goodnight. No more. I give you a whole echelon of other artists. And I've divorced them two or three times through the process. That's just the way it is. He's that kind of person. That's what's happening with the Harlem Fine Art Show. So now the story comes out that he's been writing bad checks. Oh, wow. Wow. We know he's been doing things much worse than that. The fact that the folks went on 7 on your side, uh, they sensationalized the story to present the story. But I'm here to say, number one, hands down, African-American artists are not starving artists. And even the people who can afford to come into that show and display don't deserve a starving artist mentality because starving artists can't afford to be in that show. It was the most misrepresented statement in that whole article. Now, the things that Dion Clark has done has not really begun to unfold yet. This is just two vendors who helped him, again, further his agenda, that didn't get paid. There are literally... A lot of people out there that have not come forward yet that will begin to come forward. And I'm talking about, man, it might be 50 to 100 people that this man has gotten over on who have helped him from his internal staff. Look, I've met his internal staff. They're wonderful people. All of them at the top of their game. His designer is one of the best designers I have seen. His marketing folks know social networking like crazy. His manager is like a drill sergeant. He knows how to organize everything. I, their publicists, I mean, I can give you a list of people, including the job that I did for him, which I was brought in as an artist liaison. Six years ago, I had a conversation with Dion Clark where I told him at that meeting that there is the only problem with the Harlem Fine Arts show is you. Your reputation, the things you do are catching up with you. This was six years ago. And at that time, he tried to enlist my help, like he's done several other artists, to help him get in and connect to the base of artists that had left the show. That was my job for the DC show specifically. And despite the fact that I did what I did in the, in the, in the uh, cause I'm an artist, artist advocate. I'm always watching what's happening, but I'm also trying to make sure artists are taken care of. It still got tainted by the stink of Dion Clark. His DC last DC show was one of the worst shows I've seen of that caliber in really about 30 years. And the promises he made to artists, he did not come through with, you know? And so I immediately stopped working with the Harlem Fine Arts Show after the DC show because, number one, I knew the likelihood of me being paid was going to be slim. And number two, I was furthering his agenda, just like so many other resume artists had in the past. So that's the real story. The story hasn't really developed yet. He's got cities he can't go into. Atlanta, for one. If you don't believe me, talk to some of the artists in Atlanta when he did his show in Atlanta. It was a disaster. When he went to Chicago, first show was great. Second show was a disaster. He's, he is really a, a fugitive in Chicago. There's a reason why the Chicago show didn't happen. The news on that is about to break soon, too. What I'm telling you is that, yes, Dion Clark is a snake. Yes, he is a narcissist. Yes, he really doesn't care about artists and the welfare of artists. He is using us to further his agenda. And he's using the arts to further his agenda. 
And I think it's time we all look at it and say, hey, what are we going to do about that? So, you know, I have had a lot of artists over the last couple of days sending me things like, we need to unify. We need to do X, Y, and Z. You know what? We need to start speaking up. Because for every artist that he got over on, most of us murmured to each other, but we didn't tell other folks and the right folks we were supposed to tell. And we certainly didn't tell up-and-coming artists what was happening because we didn't want to get embarrassed ourselves that we had gotten over on. Hey, call it what it is. You're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. I already explained to you, if you are a well-known artist, Half of this discussion is over because you got your own following. I got my own following. I never have to worry about what Dion Clark is going to do. But as an artist advocate, yes, I have seen some things. It's like, how can he, with a conscience, even do this? So we do have a responsibility. As far as artists getting together and doing stuff, yeah, I've watched artists in the past, men like Charles Bibbs. Charles Bibbs tried to pull artists together in the 90s, and we all thought he was trying to take over the world. So we didn't do anything. He, he, he helped us with the trade show circuit. You know, I got people, even new artists into the game, like uh, Sy Sylvia Cohen down in Atlanta, who was pulling artists together and trying to do things on another level. Does she get the support she's supposed to get? No. Does she get the sponsorship that Dion Clark was getting? No. I've watched Michael Brown galvanize artists, and he still is trying to galvanize artists to do things. I've talked to the top artists in the country. All of them have been murmuring about coming together. When is it going to happen, and how is it going to happen? Because Dion Clarks are waiting. We, he's not the first time we've seen this in the art business. There have been Dion Clarks in multitudes between 1985 and 2005 when there was so much money in this business that people were making mistakes hand over foot, some pre and some just because they didn't know what was happening. So this is not about, hey, bust down Dion Clark. Dion Clark is busting down himself, and I'm glad that finally the story has gotten out so people can really see the kind of things he's doing. Writing bad checks? Hey, where I come from, that's a jailable offense. That's why some people are being paid. But there's for every person that got paid, there's a hundred people that didn't. And when I say didn't get paid, I'm talking about staff people. I'm talking about subcontractors. I'm talking about venues. The story hasn't broke yet. Just keep, keep track of things. But we have a responsibility. Either we're going to begin to speak up about the, the things that we have. Because, you know, for me, a child, uh, a child predator is no different than I've just coined the hashtag. <laughs> You know, artist predator, because they're out here. They love what we do. They love what we bring. We are running in the background. We can elevate. We can. They can get support for the arts faster than get support on a whole bunch of other endeavors. We need to understand our stakeholder and what this thing is, and we need to own up to what we bring to the table. And we need to start protecting when people like Dion Clark are getting away with destroying uh, the reputation of our business. Now the African-American art business is tainted because this was being pegged as the largest traveling African-American art show in the country that dealt with African-American art and the diaspora. That's what the Harlem Fine Art Show represented. And they're the only people in the country doing what they do. As a matter of fact, there are no other shows outside of the, the convention circuit that have the potential that that show has. But the stink of Dion Clark is the stink of Dion Clark. And as the train driver doesn't have his act together, oh Lord, you better pray for the folks in the back of the train. It's time to come off from the back of the train and have a voice. People like Dion Clark get away with what they do because we don't speak up. And as far as all you artists out there that's talking about, hey, this is what we need to do, yeah, I hear you. But the uh, history was never written on things that were not done. I give credit to all the artists that have done what they had, could do to fortify this business and who have tried to galvanize us together, including myself. I've let my life be an artist advocate, and I know other artists that have done the same. We have a responsibility to the up-and-coming artists, too. But if you up-and-coming artists don't even know what this is about and, and it's all about you as a victim, you're not a victim. We are business people. We decide whether we're going to participate or not participate based on the circumstance. So most of us that participated with Dion Clark wasn't worried about Dion Clark from the beginning because we're all individual business people. But if you're coming to the game new and you don't know what's up, there's nothing going to be there for you. 
the artists that promote and have a following will get a good spirit, uh, a, a shake of the sales that are going to come through, and you aren't going to get anything. And the one thing the Harlem Fine Arts Show has always come short on is actual traffic during the full time of the show. Their focus and Dion Clark's focus is selling tickets for opening night. After opening night, you might not even see Dion Clark because he really doesn't care what happens with sales. He doesn't care what's happening to the artist. He doesn't care whether people are getting a return on the investment. So we are part of the problem, but we're also part of the solution. The question is, who are you going to be? Is it time to speak up or are we going to continue dealing with things where we whisper and murmur what's happening? in this industry because when a, a, a company like the Harlem Fine Arts Show falls, it affects all of us. When uh, a person that's dealing with the artist is not doing what they're supposed to, it affects all of us. There's a reason why there's a distrust in this business and there's a reason why artists have not unified in this business. And I'm very keen on why those things happen and people like Dion Clark are the reason why these things continue to happen. Let's speak up and let's be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Till next time, peace out.